What is good everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I have your WWE Money in the Bank 2020 full show predictions for you guys. We're going to run through the entire card. You guys know how these videos work. We're going to be running down the entire card, breaking it down, giving you guys my own personal predictions for each individual matchup. Obviously, coming into this show, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. This is going to be our second pay-per-view from WWE that is going to have this no crowd sort of unique style matchup where we are not going to have any fans there live it's going to be very it's going to be pretty cinematic at some points and another show where you know we're going to try to get through it the best we can during this difficult time so coming into the thing i only think i'm looking forward to two of the matches possibly a third we'll just have to see how that thing goes but on this card as of recording there is only six matches planned for now they could add a couple more i'm sure there'll be something on the pre-show or something and if they do add some matchups i will be sure to pin a comment down in the comment section below letting you guys know who i think will win those matches if you're interested in that. But coming into this, guys, we do have some unique things. Apparently, both Money in the Bank ladder matches, the men's and women's, will both be happening simultaneously, which means they will start at the exact same time and be going on at the same time. And you guys know both matches will take place at Titan Tower, which is WWE headquarters, where they're going to have to start from the ground floor and make their ways up all the different floors to the roof, into the ring, up the ladder to retrieve the contract, hanging from a crane, as you guys can see I have right here. If you guys can see the crane in the back, I do have it hooked up right here, which I thought was a pretty beautiful touch. But anyways, guys, let's go ahead and break it down. I'm going to give you my personal thoughts coming into the matchup, what I think of the feuds going on, who I think is going to win, where we go from here, and everything in between. Money in the Bank is one of my favorite stipulation matches, and hopefully this year, with the cinematic style, with both the men's and women's happening at the same time at the Titan Tower, hopefully we get something fun and unique, and we don't get something that's just hand-fed garbage. So let's go ahead and dive into Money in the Bank 2020. Alright guys, so start things off, we do have the Fatal 4-Way SmackDown Tag Team Championship match between the Lucha House Party, the New Day, the Champions, Miz and Morrison, and the Forgotten Sons. Now this matchup has potential to be a really good one, you know, I'm actually kind of excited for this one. This is that match on the card that I was like, will I be excited for it? We'll just have to see how this thing goes out. You know, I am having an open mind. I wish the Usos were in here, but apparently Jimmy or Jay had an injury and they will not be getting in here. I'm guessing that is why the Lucha House Party is thrown in here. The Forgotten Sons Sons are obviously the new fresh tag team on SmackDown. Not a big fan of them. You know, I honestly feel like they're going to be just lost in the shuffle like Sanity and all the other just countless list of names that we've seen from the tag team division come up from NXT and get lost in the shuffle on the main roster. But who the hell knows, man? You know, uh, Vince McMahon is very weird. He likes weird shit. And, you know, they're pretty jacked guys. So maybe they'll just get the push, man. Who the hell knows? But nonetheless, coming in, I think that Miz and Morrison are going to continue their SmackDown championship reign here. I think that we'll end up getting a match between those two going into SummerSlam. I bet we'll have a face John Morrison or we'll have a babyface Miz and uh, one of them will turn on the other and uh, I think here in a month or two they'll break up and we'll get a matchup at SummerSlam is what I'm going to guess. So for those reasons I am going to go with Miz and Morrison. So for those reasons I am going to go with Miz and Morrison to retain their tag titles and hopefully we get a really entertaining matchup here in this Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Championship matchup. Next up, guys, we do have the SmackDown Women's Championship match between Bayley, the champion, taking on one of my least favorite wrestlers, I think, in the entire world in Tamina. I honestly don't know why we're getting this matchup. This is just a total bathroom break, guys. I could not be invested in this match. I don't know what it would take to get invested in this match with Tamina in it. I just, I cannot, I, she just, does, oh my god. This clip pretty much sums it up perfectly for my boy JD. Tamina is fucking god awful. I, I, Tamina, you're god awful. You are absolutely dreadful at what you do. Please, please get this woman off our TVs. So I am not looking for, forward to this one at all. This is definitely my bathroom break match. But you know what? I'm going to go in to it, and I'm just going to be like, you know what? Give me a good football game. You know, sometimes when you go in with no expectations, they can pull us out of it. But I do not see this being any sort of entertaining. I'm going with Bailey to retain, and if Tamina wins, well, Jesus Christ. But that's pretty much all I have to say about this one, guys. I hope to God that Bailey does pull out the victory. But that's it, I got Bailey to retain. Next up, guys, we have a matchup that I'm actually pretty interested in as far as the booking result because I don't know what WWE is planning. We have the Universal Championship match between Jan Strowman and The Fiend Bray Wyatt. Now, coming in, these guys have some great history and everything like that, but going in, you guys know how they treated The Fiend, how they booked him, how he lost the championship to Goldberg, and then Braun beats Goldberg. So are we supposed to believe that The Fiend has a chance versus Braun Strowman when Braun Strowman took out the guy who destroyed The Fiend? I don't know, man. It's just a very tough 
thing. I mean, they booked themselves into a corner yet again with the Universal Championship here with The Fiend because if The Fiend wins, you're back right back at square one where you were. And if Braun Strowman does win, then, then you have, you're back where you were again where The Fiend is acting like Bray Wyatt losing all the big time matchups. So honestly, I don't know what they're going to do with this thing. I really don't like Braun Strowman as Universal Champion. You guys know how I feel about that. But then again, The Fiend is kind of ruined for me after everything that happened at Hell in a Cell. I've said that many times here on the channel. So I'm really not sure. I guess I'm just going to see how they book this thing. I really would like to see some fresh talent here in the Universal Championship picture, but it's like they don't really have a lot of heels on this side. And with Roman Reigns out of the picture, they're struggling for baby faces at this point. I'd like to see a Mustafa Ali, a Jeff Hardy, you know, one of those guys get up in there in the babyface realm and take the Universal Championship from whoever the champion is. But that's another argument for another day. At the end of the day, guys, I think I'm going to go with Braun Strowman in a DQ or something like that, and then we'll end up getting a rematch of this at the next show or something. So I'm going Braun Strowman. Roman. Next up, guys, with the WWE Championship match between Drew McIntyre taking on Seth freaking Rollins, two guys that I really do love. I'm a big Seth Rollins fan, as you guys know, and Drew McIntyre is a baller. I love Drew McIntyre as well. Really enjoying him as WWE Champion. I really wish that he was in front of live crowds, that he was in front of full-packed arenas, because I really think people would be losing their damn minds. Hopefully, he can hold on to that championship until we get to the full crowds, because I really want to see him interact in front of a full arena. But right now, guys, we got this WWE WWE title match going on at Money in the Bank and coming in I was really disappointed that somebody else didn't get this championship opportunity instead of Seth Rollins just because he did lose to Kevin Owens at WrestleMania it doesn't make much sense for him to be thrust into this match up here at Money in the Bank but due to I guess Kevin Owens injury and him being babyface and them looking for a heel a top heel for Drew McIntyre to square off with first Seth Rollins gets the nod here and I do think that Drew McIntyre will be retaining and I hope that this match lives up to the hype because I'm really really excited for it I know we've seen it in the past, but I am excited for it. I think these guys are going to put on a great clinic. Hopefully that's the case. We get some good matchups. I want to see Drew McIntyre put on great matches with that WWE Championship around his waist. I'm going to go with him to retain. I also hope we get a great matchup because this is the match that I'm second most looking forward to on the show. So hopefully uh, we get a good football game. But I'm going to go with McIntyre to retain. I love you. <laughs> I'm going to go with Mac uh, God in heaven. I'm going to go with McIntyre to retain the championship over Seth freaking Rollins. All right, guys, diving into the first Money in the Bank, I do know that both matches are happening simultaneously, so they will be happening at the same time. I'm really wondering how the matches are going to end. Are they going to end at the same time, or is one match going to end before the other? You know, all the women and men in the ring, would that make any sense? I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm really intrigued to see how they film this thing, how it's made, and stuff like that, because I heard that it's supposed to be cinematic and I don't know if it's been announced that it's cinematic, but I am really uh, looking forward to how they book this thing. But I am going to be starting off with the women's, then we'll get into the men's. So I do know that they're happening at the same time, but I do want to cover the women's before we get into the men's. And starting off with that match, guys, we do have Lacey Evans, Asuka, Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, Carmella, and Dana Brooke coming in. And honestly, this thing can only go a few ways. I really do think that we are going to get... Oh, man, I'm really afraid because I really think that no matter what happens, I'm probably going to be disappointed with the winner because my top two picks for this thing is going to be Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax and I do not like either of those talents. I don't think uh, I don't know. I'm just not big on them. I think they're very boring. Nia Jax is not good. You know, I, I've said that many times on the channel. She's unsafe. She's kind of a bully. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. She just does not. She doesn't. She does not do anything for me in the ring, out the ring as a character. Just garbage. But if I had it my way, I would say Asuka wins this thing. I would really like to see Asuka win this thing. I honestly could even see Lacey Evans winning it. I mean, I don't know. I could actually see all these women kind of win, except Dana Brooke. I don't see that. But a Carmella or Asuka victory would be really nice with me. I'm really interested to see how they film this thing again. I really don't know how the hell this is supposed to work with so many people going on, men and women interacting. Maybe we'll get some crossover. Maybe a man calls Nia Jax like we saw at the Men's Royal Rumble last year. I don't know, but my final prediction, I'm going with Shayna Baszler. Even though she just lost to Becky Lynch, I could see her getting that money in the bank and and then using it to capture the women's championship from Becky Lynch. I could totally see that taking place. So I'm going to go with Shayna Baszler, even though I'd really like to see Asuka win it. But I think that's going to be my final prediction. But then again, I think I'd take anybody over Nia Jax. Lacey Evans is also one of my least favorites. 
All right, guys, for our main event, we have the Men's Money in the Bank ladder match between Rey Mysterio, Aleister Black, Trash Corbin, Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles, and Otis from Heavy Machinery. Now, coming into this thing, I'm not the most excited for this lineup. I think if you replace Trash Corbin and Otis with Jeff Hardy and Kevin Owens, now there you got a good dead gum football game, Brad. But overall, I think there are some good potential winners here. Honestly, Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles, and Aleister Black stand out the most for me. You guys know how I feel about Aleister Black winning the Money in the Bank briefcase, though. I do not feel that he should win it at this juncture. Just doesn't feel like it fits his character, to be honest with you. But then again, the way they booked Aleister Black up to this point on the main roster doesn't fit his character, in my personal opinion. But another thing I want to add is that I think that the Money in the Bank briefcase, for me, has been ruined. I made an entire video talking about it. It all started with Sheamus. When he won, I really did not want him to win. I thought he was the last guy that probably should have won that Money in the Bank briefcase. The next year was Dean Ambrose, where he cashed in on the exact same night which was an amazing moment, but I think that, you know, cashing in the same night removes that surprise element waiting and waiting on the cash in at a later point in the year. Trash Corbin winning that first time, total waste of time. I I'm glad that WWE realized what they were doing and ended up failing his cash in. Braun Strowman after that, just another waste, and then Brock Lesnar after that, and another waste. So five years straight, I have had to deal with this. So hopefully this year, they can give it to AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, or Aleister Black, and they will hold on to that briefcase. I honestly would have loved to see seen Ali in this matchup. I'm really pained to see that Kevin Owens will not be in this thing. Jeff Hardy would have been a beautiful plug into this matchup. So many things that could have taken place, but I guess without a crowd, I mean, I guess it would have been better for it to be this way. I'm not sure. I know it's going to be cinematic style filmed. Titan Tower, I mean, what the hell is going on with this matchup? I think this thing could go so many ways. I'm really intrigued to see how they film it. I hope it's a lot like the Boneyard match that we got at WrestleMania between AJ Styles and Undertaker. I thought that was brilliant. I really enjoyed that as Lane and kind of cringy as it was at times. I really loved that. I thought that was fantastic. Hopefully we get something similar. My first prediction who I'd want to win would be AJ Styles, but I do think they're going to go a different route and I'm really afraid they're going to give it to Corbin, but hopefully it will be AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, or Aleister Black. My final pick is going to be AJ Styles. He was added late to this thing and uh, hopefully we just get a really cool matchup, a really unique thing with the cinematic style at Titan Tower, climbing up on the roof. Hopefully we get some crazy moments and I really don't know how this thing's going to go with the women's going on at the exact same time, but I guess that's the fun of it. It's unique. It's definitely new and exciting, so hopefully it all lives up to the hype and we get something creative and great, maybe for years to come, you know, so hopefully this changes something, or maybe, I, I don't know, man, we're just at a weird point in history right now. But that does it for my Money in the Bank 2020 predictions, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy them. Let me know your predictions down in the comment section below. Again, this is all the matches that were announced up to this point. If they announce any more, I will leave those predictions down in the comment section, but I'm getting the hell out of here guys thank you for watching subscribe to this channel follow me on instagram and twitter at my damn toys and i will see you guys in the next video thank you